So we've looked at a scripture bank, and we've also looked at guided discovery to take you through a scripture bank. There's one other thing that's very helpful if you're going to have deliberate discipleship and not any of the default discipleship that we had talked about earlier. And, and that is to be ready not only with great scriptures that are highly applicable, but also to recognize that discipleship is really the discipleship of, of the whole person. Uh, Jesus, obviously, as he walked with the, the men with whom he walked, was able to really cover so much of, of the different aspects of our life through his teaching and correcting and training in righteousness that, uh, that, that was engaged there. Uh, now, for us, the thing that I find helpful with having a, a greater comprehensive approach to helping the whole person, because really all body, mind, soul, spirit, all of that is really under the Lordship of Christ. Under that, all of those responsibilities are responsibilities given to us by Christ. All of this really then should be part of a deliberate progress in Christ. And one of the things that I find to be a, a helpful tool is to have not just a scripture bank, but a question bank. So that as I'm trying to think through a very productive and glorifying discipleship time with anyone, that I will be prompted, even if I'm not thinking through in the moment, I'll be prompted through a healthy scripture bank how to best be able to really help the entire person. And one of the ways that you can develop a better scripture bank, and I would encourage you to personally develop a, a scripture bank in this way, uh, is to consider all of the aspects of our life. And so, look at that, right? I mean, this is in, in no way comprehensive, but when you think about kind of the big areas of, of God, family, church, the world, work, school, all of these things are the things that are always concerning us and ought to be things that are always being refined as we engage as Christ calls us to engage in, in these areas. And when you think about God, for example, I mean, there, there is, of course, our faith, what's, what's more primary than that, uh, but, but also, are we living under the Lordship of Christ and in the way that we walk? Uh, are we giving our best and our first fruits to God? What is our prayer life like? How is our Bible study? Are we appreciating our walk in God under a covenant of grace, recognizing who we are as we stride this earth? With, with God as our Father, even as we consider the world, making your way down to the, the bottom left of that little chart there, uh, even as we consider the world, there's a lot that goes into it. First and foremost, do we actually have compassion uh, for the world around us? If we do, well then, my goodness, what, what is more natural than to have evangelism and aid in, in, in all of its many manifestations? In family, there's marriage, there's parenting, there's stewardship over our budget. Kind of under this, and I haven't even included all of this, is also just all of the, the, the kind of stuff responsibilities that we've been given. Perhaps you might have a car, perhaps you might have a, a, a home. Uh, with all of that, we also have to be responsible and making sure that all of it is being done in a paradigm of faith. Of course, church, fellowship, how are we doing with serving in the body of Christ? Walking in a fellowship of light rather than corrupting it to be a fellowship of darkness. Uh, shepherding, if we've been given responsibilities within the church. And then even work in school, that we are work as if we're working for the Lord and not for man. Uh, that all that we do is honoring the fact that we are image bearers of God, given the charge to go forth and to work. Even in the age to come, I think one of the things that encourages me is there will be work. Uh, and as we look at our work, whether it be school, school work or, or just you know, the, the work that earns us our income, uh, that we would look, keep all of that in mind. So with, with that in mind, I, I think as you're about to have a discipleship time with someone, there's also one other broad area of, of, um, of questions. And those would include the one another scriptures. So, for example, if you're called to encourage one another, you might want to see how someone's doing uh, so that your encouragement is not scattershot, but perhaps more pointed. Uh, and, and so if you're going to encourage, what would that look like? 
Uh, what, what are some of the other one another scriptures that you guys can think of that would uh, may, maybe help you here? There's one that said a lot. Begins with L, ends with of. Let love, exactly. Good job. Uh, be, being able to actually express your love and, and even uh, be, being able to even recognize how their love is doing. And I know that would fall under fellowship as well. Uh, but, but that would also be, I think, part of a comprehensive discipleship time. Now, these may not be actually questions, but I'm kind of stepping out of the questions for a moment. Sorry. Stepping out of the questions for a moment and making sure that other aspects of one another could be practiced in that discipleship time. So that would be to encourage, to, to love. Uh, perhaps it might be to teach or reprove or correct or train. All of that is going to come anyway. But in a typical discipleship time, that aspect of, of working like a Ukrainian women's gymnastic coach on, uh, on the, the, the uh, continuous improvement cycle, that paideia cycle of plan, do, inspect, adjust. Do, inspect, adjust. Do, inspect, adjust. Do, inspect, adjust. Once that gets going, that's not going to take up much of your discipleship time. That will be one small aspect of it, but then we also have a, a comprehensive time here to really make sure that we're bringing great encouragement to someone. And so to make sure that we are encouraging uh, that, that other person, loving that other person, uh, the, the other aspects of correcting, teaching, training, uh, in, uh, in, in reproving towards righteousness as well. But let me, let, let me put that aside for a second and, and just recognize that in a, in a question bank, if you were to have questions that were, in a sense, ready to go in these areas, you might be more likely to ask them. Sometimes we don't ask the questions because we fear that we're going to come across as an interrogator rather than someone who's genuinely caring and trying to help someone on a greater path. A greater path of glory, of Proverbs 4.18, where we begin in our righteousness, just like the, the, the morning rays of the sun, which grow ever brighter until noonday, that one of the things that I know that I hold back on is that if I'm going to ask questions, I feel like I'm going to ask them in a way that's going to make the person feel like a failure and that they're going to come away deflated from the discipleship time. So I want to be very keenly aware of that. Uh, so for example, you know, how, how's it going? A lot of times with, uh, with guys that are in my peer group, we might ask about how's it going with perhaps having family devotionals uh, with our kids or being able to have quiet times with our kids or to be able to wash our, our, our respective wives with the word of God or how, how's it going with you know, setting up dates and making time special, etc. But you can ask all of those questions, but because we know that in a lot of cases the, the, the consistency is not quite there yet, it's important not just to, to kind of throw those out there in a way that is going to leave them with failure, failure, failure uh, at the end of this. Because sometimes it's difficult, depending on a personality type, to be able to get yourself back up again and heading in a direction where you feel like, man, being discipled is amazing. And I, 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 I can't wait for the next time. No, if we ask these questions in a way that deflate, 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 uh, then people are not going to be encouraged. And unfortunately, people might actually not embrace discipleship, which if we do, that gives us every opportunity with enthusiasm to get after greater growth in our life. So, all right, so the very back work work, you guys, school work. All right, let's go, let's take about 10 minutes and let's see questions. Now, here's what I want, I want you to phrase the questions so that they're not deflating. Phrase the questions so that they uh, introduce a good discussion, but lead towards something that is going to be very beneficial and uh, hopeful. All right, thanks. All right. So you guys just wrestled with a whole bunch of questions. And again, the purpose of these questions is to produce a blossoming in a comprehensive approach to the person's life, not a wilting. And so those questions need to actually point that person in a direction where they're eager for even greater and greater growth. And as, as you do that, I think you've got to appreciate how hard it is to come up with questions that build up rather than to tear down. In 2 Corinthians 13, Paul, who has a, let's call it a roller coaster ride of a relationship with the church there, recognizes that 
He has an authority, but that authority he needs to use to build up rather than to tear down. And in a discipling relationship, you, you really do have authority. You probably don't think so. You, you think you're just a schmo that's going to get together and you're all just bumping along. But, but people actually really do regard your spiritual direction rather highly. And you're, you're here because you're regarded rather well in that regard. So that means that the way that you bring this forth does have a lot of power either to build up or to tear down. 